Hello and welcome to Dragons, Unicorns, and Other Creative Creatures. This is Rona Gopstein and this is Dr. Kevin. And we are here to take you yet again on another journey, on another artistic journey into the worlds beyond. In Creativity a, is a world beyond. Well, yeah, you know, uh, well, I think that creativity comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes. It does. And shapes seem to do well at the Oscars this year. It did. It was the shape of water. It was the shape of water. Now, what shape does water have? Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh. He's, yeah, the, 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 the monster definitely has a creature from the Black Lagoon kind of look about him. But it's not a remake of the creature. No. The oh, goodness, no. No, this is uh, Guillermo del Toro, and he won his first Oscar for directing. Um, it won directing, it won picture. I can't rem <coughs> Excuse me. I think it won a screenplay. Now I can't remember. No, Get Out won the screenplay. Okay. So, Which was have you seen the movie? I have seen The Shape of Water, yes. And up, down, neutral? Neutral. Neutral. I, yeah, I wanted to love it. It's a fairy tale. Um, and I really, really wanted to love it. And uh, I figured out the end in the first five minutes and um, there was more um, violence than I felt necessary and even more uh, nudity than I felt necessary. Um, but overall it's a very it's a very beautiful story. It's a very Beauty and the Beast story. Um, the performances are very good. Michael Shannon who plays the, the big bad guy is wonderful. I mean you give him a piece of scenery and he'll eat it. He just goes to town. So, so the, did they just put in, you know, gratuitous nudity? I felt if it weren't there, it wouldn't have... Made one iota of difference? Nope. Was it at least good eye candy? Depends on how you feel about Sally Hawkins. Well, I don't know. I've never tried to hawk Sally. <laughs> oh. Should have known that was coming. <laughs> hey! There yeah. weren't any surprises, I have to say. That was... That was um, that was uh, almost unfortunate. It's always nice when there's one, one or two, but everybody who was sort of winning up to that point won again. Okay. If you mm -hmm. could have, because I didn't see the Oscars, mm -hmm. so I'm speaking. I know that, that I was hoping that, that there was a movie that I wish had won more than it did, mm -hmm. um, but which one would you have given the Oscar to? I didn't see all the, the ones that... Uh, that were nominated for Best Picture. I did end up seeing all the short animated and the short live action, actually, because I went to a festival that had those, which was kind of cool to see them all. Um, and yes, now we have to say, you ready for this? Academy Award winner Kobe Bryant. Okay. The, uh, the basketball player, because his animated film won Best Short. Okay. Um, in a beautiful film, by the way, you know, we, we talk about creativity and we talk about passion and the, his short is called Dear Basketball which is his love letter to the sport. And he recorded the audio the day he retired. Oh, okay. And it is about his childhood and how he fell in love with this game and how he's given it his all and how b basketball still has his heart and spirit, but his body can't do it anymore. Okay. The heart and the spirit left the body behind. Yeah. You know, too many years of, you know, did the body can't do it forever. Mm. So that was, you know, you don't think of sports necessarily as being creative and yet, it is something, though, that he was so, it was so clear how deeply passionate he was, okay. which was wonderful. I would think I would have liked to have seen um, Greta Gerwig's film Lady Bird have done better. Okay. I got a lot of uh, nominations, and at the Film Independent Spirit the night before, it actually uh, won several awards, but it would have been nice to have seen that one okay. do a little better. She's only the third or fourth woman nominated for Best Director. Okay. So hopefully more of that. Um, I was... 
I was really hoping that Wonder Woman would have got nominated. Oh, it didn't get, yeah. Although Jimmy Kimmel made note of it in his opening monologue. He said, you know, I remember a day when the studios claimed that a, a woman-driven superhero film or a black-driven superhero film um, you know, wouldn't do well at the box office. And he said, and the reason I remember that is because it was last year. Ah. And now Black Panther is the seventh highest grossing domestic film of all time. Yep. And, and Wonder Woman bro shattered all sorts of awards. All sorts of awards. It's, in, it's on the top 10, but it's, I think it's definitely within the top 15 or somewhere around there. Yep. She presented. It was lovely to see her. She's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, call Me By Your Name. Call Me By Your Name. He won for um, Best Actor at the Independent Spirit Awards, Timothy Chalamet, the one who plays the lead. Yes. It was, I, I love that film. That was a great film. So, speaking about women who are changing the world, as we just were in Wonder Woman. Yes. We have a woman here who's changing the world. She is. Yes, yes. one yes. image one, at a time. Yes, one little paintbrush stroke at a time. <laughs> uh, Christine Wright is an independent artist from Portland, Maine. Yes, that's Maine, not Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody always goes to Oregon. It's like, no, Maine was written. Maine, Maine was, was the, first. Maine was first who specializes in portraits of all kinds using traditional mediums of charcoal, graphite, watercolor, and pen and ink. She also apprentices and works alongside artist Michael Rich of Mike Rich Designs, creating commissioned custom murals using spray paint. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't imagine getting the detail. And when do you all see these images? Because the detail they get using, I can't. It's awesome. I, you know, uh, we both know somebody who does body paint mm -hmm. stuff, but she's on the other coast. I'd love to get her on. I just was using spray paint. I thought of her. I don't know why. Mm. Together, they have painted a numerous music and art festivals across New England. As part of her apprenticeship with Michael, she has worked on a nonprofit called Dunk the Junk, which travels the country painting murals to, uh, to educate school children on healthy Nutrition. I guess the junk is junk food and you're not supposed mm -hmm. to be eating dunk it. The junk. Dunk the junk. Okay. As so, opposed to putting it in my coffee, you know, just the dunk the donut. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that there's probably not many golden arches in those murals. Christine, no. welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So... Uh, what is your, you, you paint in a lot of different mediums and my first mm -hmm. question for you is, do you have a favorite? Um, yeah, I think my, my definite favorite would be charcoal or graphite, um, just because I really love doing portraits and I really love the kind of slow and controlled nature of using charcoal and graphite. Um, yeah, you think don't think a spray paint is being slow and controlled? It's, it's not really. It's, <laughs> it's completely different and it's been kind of a challenge to learn that. Um, it's, it's really a lot different, but I really like the... They're really slow and relaxed and you're adding slow details and you're really, you have time to think about it and get into the feel so of the how, portrait. So mm, how long have you been doing, um, uh, how long does it take you to do a portrait? Like if I had, no, if I had known that was going to be her answer, I would have said, well, bring a pad of paper and a graphite and do <laughs> right. a portrait, you know. <laughs> oh. She's not a caricature artist. Yeah, know? that's mm. completely different. Yeah, um, <laughs> she can't just The one, one that I have... Not these here, but the, the one that I have of Floki, the Viking guy, um, the charcoal drawing, that probably took about 26 hours to do. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of sitting and listening to music and being really quiet and focusing and just, yep. you know, feeling into it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, we'll be bringing your stuff up in a second until okay. we tell them. We oh, okay. see it, but they, but, okay. but the audience, said, the audience said, <laughs> gotcha. not like the ones here. And you looked off, and the audience went, where, where, where? where? what do we miss? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> like puppies. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a clue of the pictures that are coming. Okay. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, we're going to give you the challenge. We've given several artists that have, we've we've given it to. Our own artist uh, here, who's one of the members that actually does film crew and does stuff for us, we, we challenged him as a very creative graphic artist mm -hmm. to come up with a logo for the show. We don't have a logo mm. yet, so if you ever yeah. feel like drawing a dragon and a unicorn, oh, yeah. Yeah. you're so moved. You, you can, know, we, we you would be our give permanent you, logo. You get, get credit at credit. the end right. of the show for it. Yeah. Um, because it's been almost, uh, it's been almost like months. Year. Yeah. Well, we've been here almost a year. Yeah. Well, but we interviewed him fairly early on, and he, that ball has dropped so many times you would have thought it was Kobe Bryant. 
And I'm saying this right now because he's actually filming us today, so I'm giving him a hard time. <gasps> hard time. Because <laughs> we can do that kind of thing. <laughs> but yeah, hey, create us a beautiful dragon and unicorn, and we'll 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 play, make it as part of our image every show. And we'll All have right, a little that'd be awesome. Art yeah, box. So if you need a logo. So inspired. We do need a logo. Yeah. Yeah, we do need a logo. Mm -hmm. So we have seltzer cans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got to talk about one of these one of these show, but we'll we'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll stay yeah. we'll stay we'll stay on task and stay with Christine because her we'll work is amazing. <laughs> so, um, when did you start? I mean, it looks like you you, you look like you're about twelve. No, I know. <laughs> I feel old sometimes. I started days. drawing when I, I have probably kindergarten mm -hmm. or even younger. I mean, I've got old photos of me with finger paint, kind of at the camera, like ah, fing, you know, mm -hmm. so happy to be painting. Um, but as long as I can remember, I've, I've been drawing and painting and doing other creative things. Um, really started getting serious, I think, about it within the last five years. Mm -hmm. um, but been dabbling in all kinds of things for, for forever. That's great that, yeah. you, that it, it didn't, you weren't, it wasn't drummed out of you by some <clears throat> well-meaning art teacher or... No. That's awesome. No, to, it was kind of just... for so long. Yeah, it was just innate and it just kind of came out. And, I like that. Yeah. Did yeah. you, now, have you ever taken any classes in art outside, outside of the, the poor excuse they do in public education a mm -hmm. lot of the times? Because they no. cut the budget. Not because there's not some mm -hmm. great art teachers in public education, mm -hmm. but this they just cut, their, cut the budget. Go ahead. No, never, never taken any kind of specialized art class. I mean, I had all of the, um, you know, just in elementary school, we had, I had a really great teacher, uh, Mrs. Fratty, and she made a big difference too, and she inspired Yay, me. But, um, we love those teachers. Yay, Mrs. Yeah, Fratty. Miss Fratty, yeah. Miss Fratty, is she so still teaching? So you're self-taught, though. I am self-taught. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, Mike Rich has taught me a lot. Um, we've done a lot of spray paint, so. I'm a pro basically apprenticing under him, so he's taught me everything I know about spray painting. That's and a nice way to have, to, to have yeah, that, too. Instead yeah. of now, did you start, like, on or... bicycles or something? Oh, sorry. Subway cars. <laughs> the size of subway cars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she also took track so she could run away from the cops. <laughs> so is, is Miss Friday still teaching? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't Ms. been Friday, in touch with her. Miss Friday, if you're still teaching. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you, you will get a link to this show. So if she's still teaching, yeah. you should send it to her. Yeah. Teachers yeah. need to hear more often that they've made a difference in a student's life because yeah. teaching's not easy these days anymore. Because it was so easy then. No, well, you know, it's never, you know, easy is, you know, but yeah, it's gotten worse, especially for the specialized teachers. Mm -hmm. So what grade was that? Oh, that was probably... Gosh, third grade, second, third grade. Oh, wow. That's awesome. When I had her. Okay. Um, so was she, uh, yeah, of course, they all look old when you're in the third grade. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, every now know. and then I realize I'm older than any of my elementary school teachers were, and I'm like, holy crap. Um, I, I had <laughs> elementary school teachers that were older than I was, and they're still teaching. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yikes. No. Um, <laughs> uh, was she a younger woman or an older woman? She was probably in her 40s. Um, so she's probably still she teaching. She could be. She may because, be. Because you were in third grade, what, two years ago? <laughs> I told you, you so young. So we're going to show some pictures because we got a lot of your art that we're okay, going to yes. be sharing. So we can bring those up. So now, what medium is this? This is in watercolor. This is watercolor and also micron pen uh, for the really dark spots, like in the eyes, the blacks of the eye, and in some parts of the gum on the dog. Um, but mostly watercolor. Just are, watercolor. These, are these animals you know well? Yeah, these are actually gifts for my pet, for my parents and for my sister for Christmas. Aww. These are pet portraits of their pets. So uh, top left is Riley, my mom's dog. Um, top right is Khaleesi, that's my sister's dog. And then the bottom is uh, Peaches and Simone. Oh, Both see, now she been Peaches and Cream. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't name them. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, but Simone, if Simone were more cream colored, perhaps she'd get that one. It's actually a boy. If <laughs> Simone were more cream, he him a might have bit. gotten that one. He's got oh. an interesting name. That's all right. Yeah. My, my, They're my... beautiful, though. The eyes, I mean, yeah. they just seem so alive, which is they, wonderful. Yeah, they... that's what I aim for. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you feel like they could jump off the page and come curl up in your lap. Mm -hmm. Good. Which would be Good. pleasant. Yeah. Um, yes, I miss my cat. Dragons, Aww. unicorns, and other furry creatures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, well, you know, we've had we have had several shows. Well, I should we spoke on several times on shows, and we did a show about gift giving around the holidays. Yes, we talk about the most priceless gifts are things like this. Yeah, those are irreplaceable 
um, you know. I'm usually broke at the holidays too, so it's <laughs> perfect, <laughs> you know. You oh, know. I always do art for them, and you know, that's what I would want anyway, is a piece of art from an artist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't want people to spend their money on me. I want, you know, a really thoughtful gift, like okay. a piece of them, you know. So, now we've moved on. Okay. So we're getting a little this yeah, this is different <coughs> medium. Very different. Yeah. yeah. And um, thank you for sending us both the finished and then the in process yeah, with the eyes. I really enjoy I that. Yeah. It's so, neat that you took the pictures that you thought to stop and say this is what yeah. the process was. So tell us a little this is obviously not watercolor. No. Actually, I shouldn't say obviously. But this I is would charcoal. Guess. Okay. Yep, completely. This is charcoal. your favorite. This is my favorite. Okay. Um this is, I don't know if anybody watches the TV show Vikings, but this is one of my, one of the, my favorite characters from that show. Um, his name's Floki. And I don't know why I just got inspired to draw him. I really like his face. Um, I think he has a really interesting face. And sometimes just certain things will inspire me and I'll say, hey, I really need to draw that because I have that feeling right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Um, well, I've never seen the show, but looking at your drawing, I would say that this is a character that's internally conflicted. He's very, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That he fights against, he's, he's basically good, but he fights against his own shadow side yeah. and probably a past <laughs> which has, you know. Weathered him. Yeah, yeah. which, is, which has, has made him cynical, but he's still somewhat... Now I've never seen the show. Yeah, you've no, and I'm you've just picking. I'm just on. looking at this and saying, He's, the face you drew. This is what it says to me. And I, that's what I love about portraits. Um, is you know, I can I get a certain feeling when I look at at that face, and mm -hmm. I want to be able to capture that. And I'm kind of embodying that whole feeling the whole time that I'm drawing it. That's um, interesting. It's so, not just creating the face. It's embodying the feeling you get. When yeah. you see him. And it's almost mm. like you're getting to know them as you're drawing them because you're staring into their eyes and into their face for mm -hmm. 26 hours, you know. Um, it's all the time to spend yeah. with someone. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. the eyes are incredible, and obviously that's what you, that's what you see first. And for mm -hmm. lots of reasons, one, he has very emotive eyes, and two, yeah. the, the, oh, yeah, the, the makeup, makeup look. Yeah. But yeah. the detail in the mustache and beard are and outrageous. The fur. Thank oh you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the fur collar. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the clear delineation between the two that it's two different textures. Oops, sorry guys, I just hit my mic. So <laughs> for you listening at home for the thump thump, yes, that mm. was my Lena Lamont routine. Um, <laughs> the ah, somebody got the joke. Singing in the rain, go see it. Um, you can see the difference in the two. You know the the difference between facial hair and the fur he's wearing. Good, that's I'm glad amazing. you can. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The fur was the hardest part. Besides the wrinkles on his forehead, for that for some reason that was really tough for me. Um, but the fur was really, it was really a challenge to get that. I can only imagine. I mean, you know, when even in animation they they say that was one of the when they did like Monsters Inc. That was the hard. That was the oh big my, challenge yeah. was fur imagine. for that one. It took them years before they gave them changeable um, clothes because that was a future challenge. But mm. the movement of the fur for Sully and a couple of the other monsters. So even just doing it in still. Yeah. Just because when I mean, you end up just like you personally must feel like you know every every line. After. Yeah, it's, yeah, you really do. You, you draw the line, but then you have to shadow the line, and you have to highlight the line, and you have to. Right. Yeah. You said it's layers. It's, it's not yes. just so many layers in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, now as far as like you said, Monsters Inc. was it, mm -hmm. and they were on their third or fourth. That was yeah. That was a that was a few in. Oh, and, okay. So look how far they've come. Hmm. <laughs> Uh -huh. Now, did you did you snap? Was there a picture <laughs> on a website that you yeah. were that you were um, copying from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if you were to do a portrait of somebody, you would do the picture and replicate the portrait. I or? could do either. It's certainly harder to look at someone in in actual life and replicate them. Um, it's also hard for us to just sort of sit there like they once yeah. did. Yeah. Um, some artists will say that's the only true way to do it, um, but I just happened to say, hey, I'm really in the mood to draw, and I want to draw Floki's face, and I went online, and I found the picture, picture that like. spoke to me the most of him, and I just had it on my Kindle, you know, like a small, small little mm -hmm. um, screen, and I just converted that into a much bigger drawing, so I just had that next to Have me the whole time. Have you thought to send it to the actor? 
I actually tagged him on uh, Instagram, good. but I haven't gotten anything back. I wish. I wish that he would see. Okay, that. Floki, like you must it. you must let her know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Come on, Floki. One of the. Uh, things is, is she's actually a magic user, so she puts one hand on the Kindle and one on the yeah. paper. Wouldn't that be her, lovely? She transfers. No. Okay, that's like a writing that. It goes into my brain and out the other hand. To me, it may as well be magic, mm. because you said 26 hours, 26 days, I couldn't have come up, you know, gotten anywhere near it. Because while I am creative and, and, I, and I love to create and I, and I love, you know, all of those aspects, artistic and the drawing aspect, mm. it would take, it would, I, I need lessons. Yeah. I need many, many, many lessons. Um, so now, would you ever do like, uh, like get a half a dozen different pictures of somebody that was catching different looks and different things, and then kind of do a composite to create it? I mean, is that something that you've tried, or um. that you would want to try, or? Is it more, I just want to work with, with one? Because different lights catch different... That would be exceedingly difficult, I think, to recreate a, a whole different viewpoint of someone's face from a, a conglomeration of different angles. Mm -hmm. um, most people that do portraits or real, uh, realism or semi-realism use one reference one. photo, and they just recreate that. They're not... Um, okay. Well, let's see another one that you've done. So here on the left, that's just a sketch... Um, I kind of wanted to put it in there just to kind of show you guys like an, another process. Yeah. And this is with graphite. Um, this was probably like an hour or so sketch. It's not super detailed, but it's kind of more That's my style. not super no. detailed? Holy cow. <laughs> it's not, um, it's, it's pretty rough because you can see the shading isn't really very smooth. It's kind of more stylized. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, but that's just more my style. Um, I really so like yeah, because you can at this point, yeah, you can still see, sort of the very more the of the sketch lines yeah. and yeah, yeah. Still though, that's incredible. I mean, I can see the bump in his nose or mm. her nose. It could be a woman. I see. Yeah, it's a it's a man. Yeah. Uh, so, the would you ever want to teach art? I thought about it. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe someday, but that's not really my goal right now. I really just want to. You know, yeah, what do is commissions. your goal? Ooh, goals, goals, yeah. goals, goals. I just want to be able to sell my art and make enough money to live on it and just be able to be creative every goals. day and okay. um, just continue building the, the business that I have now and doing my work with Mike and, okay. you know, so, just see where it goes. Um, now, and I want to get to the picture on the other. Well, yeah. we'll get to the picture on the other side in just a okay. second. Because I got, a, I've got a question for Rona. I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. Mm -hmm. Spot here. Okay. Um, here's the spot. Here's the spot, and I Boom. am on it. Uh, no. <laughs> um, now we we have a lot of writers that come in, mm -hmm. um, and I know that a lot of times there's conversations about them finding the right cover art for their books. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, now, you have much more familiarity because you brought most of those in. Mm -hmm. They've come in on your broomstick. Hmm. Isn't that subtle, boys and girls? <laughs> uh, well, you say that like it would be a bad thing. Oh, I, I, hey, I, I'm, you know, that's right. I have a thing that says that. You say wicked like it's a bad thing. Okay. So anyway. Um, but it, have you ever thought of doing book covers? I mean, is there, a, is there a, a plethora of people that do book covers or a shortage? Or do, don't you know? Because... <sighs> The way you do it, I mean, of course, here mm -hmm. it would be, I don't know if this is how you do it for your book covers, because none of my book covers had people on them, mm -hmm. um, was uh, you would, I would think you would read the character mm -hmm. or ask the artist or, or ask the writer, like, what was their visual or whatever. For yeah. most of the publishers I've worked with and that I know of, we send in a, what's known as a cover, a, a, a cover sheet, not... It, not like a cover sheet you put on a, a fax, but something enough about the book. So, you know, basic um, descriptions of the hero and heroine. Is she, you know, in my case, you know, she has red hair. He is clean shaven, but his hair is long and things like that. I've actually had final covers come in and realized, oh, I better throw the, a beard on this poor guy because mm. that's what's on the cover now. Um, mm. So it varies. Um, uh, and things like that. There are people who prefer object covers and stuff. And we f they find them in different ways. Um, there are cover artists or people you can, you know, you can search for um, 
and and there's even some websites where the artists can compete. So hmm. you send them the specs, and That's they compete for. Um, and then you can send the the whole um, request out to your friends and have them vote too, and see who liked what best. <laughs> So something that after the show you can connect mm -hmm. up with her, but this is you know you're saying my job. Yeah. If you want to be goal. creative, that is certainly a way because with more people between independent publishers and self-publishing, obviously we need covers that will catch okay. catch the eye and mm -hmm. let us stand out. So let's go back to the the, the last picture because we didn't really do that portrait on the right. We just did the eyes. Okay. So let's look at this <laughs> this portrait again. You actually brought it with you, but with I the did. glass, I'm afraid it's going to. Oh, it'll shine. reflect. We won't yeah. see the great yeah. detail. It, and I'm guessing from the the little pen at the top that this is watercolor. It is partly watercolor. It's also this thing on the left. It's mm -hmm. a Prismacolor marker. Um, this is actually I'm. I'm, I always get inspired by music, and this is one of my favorite musicians. This is Mike Ness of Social Distortion. Um, and this is actually a still from him in a um, one of the music videos where he dresses up as a gangster. And um, It does have that film noir yeah. look, too. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I really like that. So I screen grab that, and I kind of... Um, this is different because it's, it's more layered. You can see there's not a lot of blending on the, on the colors. Yes, it's like a layered... Yeah, so you can see the steps of the different shades. Mm. Um, so this is what it looks like before you take the beauty blender and like right. even out all your yeah. contouring. Yeah, <laughs> so this is kind of a different style for me, but I wanted to try it. I like it. it because his face in some ways, and, and this is true of characters in film noir because he has that bogey thing going on, his face is almost as rumpled as his shirt. Right. Yeah. yeah. So i got to write that down. i got to use that line. <laughs> That's a good line. His face was as rumpled as his shirt. And then the, the background is watercolor. Mm. Um, just trying to get that sort of smoky feel of the smoke billowing up around him. Well, I like um, the fact that I can see that he has a brim and the brim is satin, satin, satin because the way that the mm. purplish is hitting it mm -hmm. tells me that that brim is satin. It, right, it's a different uh, material than that's the rest of the hat. Yeah. That that's velvet, that, mm. that, that, that that's uh, probably a velvet type or mm -hmm. uh, fedora. Fedora, yeah, it's fedora, but it's I got it, it's it's got that two tone. Mm. Yep, two yeah. different materials. So it's, it's, yeah, yeah, which would make it a little more expensive too. You know, <laughs> yeah. as far as who the man is. Yep, <laughs> and then you have some of the same purple shades. It's in the back, which right. very subtly brings out mm. the purple of the fedora. But you don't think about it unless you're. You're right. looking. His right. eye is blue, that kind of um, shale blue, too, I believe. Mm. Um, kind of coming from the background and in his shirt a little bit, too. So it's kind of hard to notice with that. I think that also ties it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, now can we have the next one now? Yes, because these are very different as far as... Um, yeah. <laughs> sort of, uh, um, well, emotionally different, I guess, is what I was, you yeah. know, my first thought was, you know, mm -hmm. we've gone from, from, you know, sort of the gift portraiture and, you know, right. and two, you know, character, well, not characters, two people, mm -hmm. and, and in some ways the characters they play, to, well, now Frankenstein, Frankenweenie. Frankenweenie. Frankenweenie yeah. mm -hmm. from the Tim Burton movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I, I love Halloween. I really love that movie, too. I think Frankenweenie, Sparky, is, he's just super adorable. Um, I also love Stephen King and I love the Ramones. I don't know if you guys know the I pet want, cemetery. I want to be buried in a yeah. pet cemetery. So yeah. I just had, you know, it was Halloween time. I'm like, I want to do a fun little, it's almost like a tattoo flash style. <laughs> um, it is. Right? So, and, and that's the, the way the watercolor shading that they would do that would be similar um, to this would, would be. I'm always um, amazed that they can shade in tattoos. That's yeah. incredible to me. Yeah, yeah when so I looked at the rose, I thought, oh, that looks like it should be a tattoo. That yeah, could that as is well. tattoo flash style, traditional, neo traditional rose. We, we uh, actually, yeah. later this month, we're going to have a henna tattoo artist yes. who's going to do tattoos on one or both of us. Cool. Um, I've always wanted one, but I've never gotten one. A tattoo yeah. or henna? Or both. Both, both. yeah. Me either. <laughs> so, me either. Um, so anyways, yeah. But I but do. I love, I love Frank and Weenie. He's adorable. And it's yeah. funny because Tim Burton clearly has a thing for, for puppies. You wouldn't think so. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem like the cute, cuddly puppy kind of guy. But Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack has a dog. Right. And in Corpse Bride, um, when Victor goes to the underworld, he meets his dead dog, mm -hmm. um, who's, now all, who's now just nothing but bones. And then, of course, Frankenweenie was yeah. his first film. It was originally a short. Um, and then he made it into a full-length animated film. So he clearly has a thing for them. And, and his, yeah. those are his dogs. They're just sort of the big eyes. And right. Yeah. Somewhere between a 
pit bull and a Jack Russell Terrier. Like, I, I almost feel like he's a bull ter terrier. Yeah. Like Patton's dog, right? He's the young. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But Frank and Winnie is exactly what you think. He, the young boy brings his dog back. And mm. Yes. It's uplifting. It's Ultimately, it's uplifting. Yeah. yes. Yes, it is. No, there you go. <laughs> So, um, and the roses, and the rose is also watercolor, you said it is. It's it's uh watercolor and uh India ink, which is a really hyper pigmented, yeah. The black yeah. is black, yeah. yeah. Same with um, on the left with the Frank and Weenie, that's also India ink, that's the mm. black, yep. And that's an old medium, I mean, India ink yeah. has been around, oh, yeah. Forever. I used to play with India ink years and really? years ago, yeah. Mm. Okay, so let's see what our next, because I know we got a lot of art here. So now yeah. we're going to move to the, I have to tell you, when, when Christine sent me the art to create these slides for all of you to see, you know, like, okay, the portraiture's on, and then she moved to murals. I'm like, oh boy, i got to squeeze these down somehow. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay, murals. <laughs> so everybody picture big when you look at these. Picture mm -hmm. how big they are. It's nice that you have you in front of them there, because that gives us a little perspective, mm -hmm. which is why I want to do this first for everybody. Okay. So now tell us what this, tell us, so this, how... How did you move from that to that? <laughs> Tell us about the journey. Well, this is my work here. This is with Mike Rich, um, apprenticing under him. And, and um, this one on the left says Julian. And that's in a graffiti style letter. And that's his forte. He designed the letters. Um, this is kind of, the one on the left is kind of from the beginning when I was first learning. So it's like, OK, start to fill, make, do the fill of the, the letters and, and um, do some shading and some shapes. And, you know, slowly, once you learn that, you build yourself up um, to doing more elaborate work. So um, was this for, like, a kid's room? This is in a kid's room, yeah. That's this awesome. One, uh, where that, I don't remember where that one was. I think maybe Orrington, somewhere in central Maine. That kid has in a, kid's a graffiti room. wall art in his bedroom. Yeah. He's going to grow up creative. Yeah. 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 And you guys have signed it. I love that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those but are, what made you move from, okay, art I can keep in front of me on a table to... Art that needs space. Did you meet Mike and is that what happened? That, or? Yep, that's exactly so, uh, what happened. Yeah, I met Mike. Art inspired and, by art. Yeah. Art artists inspired by artists. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Now, is there a, is this all freehand or does this, is it, does he, uh, I mean, we're, we're looking to have Mike on the show at some point, so yeah. I don't want to get too detailed because <laughs> that will be his show. But, um, I want to meet him. But um, is there a, it, does he create a stenciling or does he all freehand? It's all freehand. He's Ooh. been doing it for 30 years, so he's amazing. I can't even paint a solid color for him yeah. really well. <laughs> okay. So let's look at, so do we have, we have, I assume we have more pictures. We do. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, now, now we're talking big. Big, big. Big. Yeah. I think that one on the left, 100 foot long. Yeah, about 100 feet long there on the left. That's on Main Street in Westbrook. Okay. Um, and that is like a, one of those postcard styles where you yeah, see greetings, greetings from, from, you know. Yep. So inside each letter, there's a different scene or a historical thing from, from Westbrook. And Look at the detail. That, you can yeah. see the Westbrook sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The welcome yeah. to. And the, I mean, the, the fire engine and the school bus. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that the towns and, and next to it, um, Casco Bay, want art just yeah. splashed across um, their, their, their homes, their places of, of where they chose to live and work. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's great. and you know, one of the, um, you know, one of the things that so impressed me, we, we did, we've done a couple of shows on my time in Carousel, where I was for my honeymoon, yeah. was you go into there and every alley, everywhere, there's art yeah. and there's yeah. sculptures and there's, you know, like live full-size, you know, sculptures that are painted crazy. And I was just like, I just, you could just like walk around and go, no. whoa, and you don't see that. Not in Vain. Like it's, it's getting a little better in here, in, say here in Portland, we're not in Portland anymore, but in Portland, well, it's done, getting better. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Mike and I went to Art Basel in Miami and that's just huge murals everywhere. And it's just, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was just in, in Carousel. It wasn't just mural, murals. Murals. Mm -hmm. Muriel. Muriel. Mm -hmm. um, no, <laughs> murals. Uh, it was 
you know, it was Everything. sculptures, yeah. and it was, you know, I mean, and mm -hmm. they were, uh, anyways, so it does, uh, but I love it. I think this is great. Do we have another, uh, we another do. set of pictures? We have two more, I think, from this. Yeah. Okay. This is us at uh, Great North Fest, and that was in Minot, Maine, um, two years ago. Um, I love it's, those It's colors. a music and arts festival, so all kinds of different, there's other people that were doing aerosol art there. Um, aerosol art. Spray yeah. paint, aerosol art. It, you, I just never heard it called aerosol yeah, art before. Yeah, I mean, that, that also would mean you could use different, different forms stuff. of... But now, I love yeah. it. The colors are just... Thank you. What is that on? Is it on the wall of a building? It's or is on it... plywood sheets. Okay. What do they call it? Luon? Hmm. Is that what it is, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, Luan sheets. For those of you who can't tell, Mike is in the audience. <laughs> yes. uh, we would pan to him, but we're, you know, <laughs> yeah. we're not quite that sophisticated here yet. Besides, um, we're keeping him hidden until his show. Yeah. I'm breaking the rules here. Uh, That's all right. So, no. so now, with the, so you, you set this up for the show, mm -hmm. and then did you break the panels down? Are they somewhere else? We, or did they leave? we left them there um, when we went home, but I'm sure whoever um, was in charge of that they still have them, and they broke them down and, and are keeping them somewhere in storage. So they can yeah. use them for another festival, yeah. too. And you notice yeah. uh, good branding. They got the website at the Very bottom. Very smart. Right. Good yes. branding. Mm -hmm. Good Absolutely. branding. Good job. Always know who, who did your work. Yeah. Show your work off. A lot of artists are own not so it. good in the, in the business it, side. No, and, the and, and remembering to and own like what you've <laughs> done. You know. So, so I think we've got one more we picture. We have one more of, of the, and these I thought were fun. Oh. Okay. Sort of the, let's put art everywhere. <laughs> it doesn't have to be stationary. It doesn't have to be right. You know, these are trucks. The one's a food truck, mm -hmm. and obviously the other is you know a fuel truck, which is yeah. a, not what you would think of. Well, but it's it's but I, I would because it's a biofuels it biofuels yes biofuels truck, mm -hmm. which obviously is yes. wanting to. Uh, to uh, separate itself out from fossil fuels. Yes, and yeah. that definitely makes a distinction. Yeah. But they're, they're different, but I love the food truck. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a spot for him to put his menu every day. Yep. So yep. now. Um, and a portrait of him. It, well, yep. yeah, and a portrait of him on the truck, which <laughs> mm -hmm. I love. Um, now, because I know, now, so I have to ask. Okay. So did you do more of the portrait or did Mike? Because I know you specialize in portraits, yeah. but is this also a talent? I mean, this is all very talented, but you know, mm -hmm. some artists mm -hmm. are more talented in certain area, kinds yeah. of, of stuff. So yeah. who, who did the... Mike did the portrait of that one. He's very good at portraits with the spray paint and I'm still building up to that. Um, I've only been spray painting probably four years, so... Um, that's going to take quite a bit of time to get the finesse in order to really recreate somebody's face that well. In, in um, spray paint, yeah. But I'm, I'm excited, excited to, my name to see in spray paint. how yeah. it goes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, does he always wear that hat? I don't know. We just met him that day. Oh. <coughs> that's I'm great. assuming probably yes. <laughs> it's it's, it's <laughs> part of like his he brand. Yep. 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 Yeah. That definitely. Well, and you know, I, th I think that we are seeing, and this goes through ebbs and flows. You can look back historically mm -hmm. and see when there were times when people thought that original art and different kinds of art form, um, I mean, back through the last century, mm -hmm. probably not so much the century before, but with all of the moves in technology and things, is that uh, we go through periods where people, like this is, this is like, oh wow, that's so cool. Then it, at some point, people start to think it's dated, and now that it's going to be mm, right. a finer art, or you know, uh, if it's really professional, that it would be printed or would be screened right. on. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then that goes because then people go, oh, so there's a cycle, mm -hmm. and I think that probably in Maine, I'd say that we, especially the cycle depends on who the, who are the artists, because there's a there's a there's a shelf life not yeah. only to certain kinds of art, because at some point this truck will die. Right. <laughs> yes, it's very zen in that, case, in that way. Yep. Mm -hmm. there, it won't last forever. Mm -hmm. the, the mural art can be more transient, I mean, in, in a way, when it's... Yeah, because it's outdoors and it's going to be... Um, it it know, gets aged and weathered, weathered like the yes. artist. Mike had done 
without me. He had done the truck before that, this one, mm -hmm. by himself, um, and that had rolled over and it was gone, and that's why we got to do the second one. There so you that, go. I mean, that fits in great with, with it that It does, thought, and it actually, you know? And, you know, and certain art styles fit certain artists, because he's a chef, so I'm gonna call him an artist, mm -hmm. fit it better. The very stylized or realism, I don't think would fit him as well as you know, the, the Jerry Garcia in a food truck look. Right. Um, you know, work <laughs> Almost with... caricature. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a works. It's a, it's because a, it's... he is. Yeah, he looks like he could have been in one of the Hobbit movies. You're possibly, or even Gamble character. himself, you know, so yeah, so it no, works with... I was thinking with... more of one of the dwarfs. <laughs> it's the beard. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, because, you know, this style of art works for who he is. Yep. Um, and what he's selling. Absolutely. Really, it's not as if he's selling croissants and, you know, and Hoity toity, or you know, very specific, you know, very. I'm sure Mike could do hoity toity. I, you know, <laughs> Mr. Anderson here could do it, but he's, he's, yes. I mean, there's flames on the vehicle. The man's going to be doing some serious barbecue, yeah, is my guess. Yes, yeah. yep. smoked and grilled specialties. Those are bowls of chili. Yep. yep. Yeah. Now, where is this truck driving around? Is it in Portland, Let's Maine? Let's see, where was he? He was in Milo, Milo, Maine. Oh my, he, this so must really way... stand up in Milo, Maine. It was an event, I think it was in the newspaper. Um, People were walking by from the neighborhood. They were coming by as we were painting, and oh, that's it was, great! Yeah, yeah. But they, see, you guys can create a trend because because it's movable art, and right. people see it. Somebody else goes, you know. It, there is a shame though because all I can think of is I don't know when the last time you were in Portsmouth, either one of you. It's been a while. But there was the Wyland Wall, which mm -hmm. was such a huge deal when it was done. And, you know, and that's when Wyland was started doing his art and it was getting really big and doing the art and, mm -hmm. you know, and he was blah, blah, blah. But there was some kerfuffle between the artist and the wall and the building that it was done on and, mm. it, was, and it was never completely finished. I mean, it was it wasn't treated right or whatever. And then it became crack and then it became and now it's become an eyesore instead mm. of a great work of art. Um, and I don't know what the, I can't remember at the time, I think I knew what the kerfuffle was, mm. but it is. Which is also what happens. Because, but there are certain ways you can treat things outside so that they'll last longer, yeah. so that yeah. they don't. And th I don't think this ever got the final treatment. I think mm. he left before it was done because of so the kerfuffle. So it's fading so faster. It, mm. Yeah, and, and, and now it kind of looks like it should be a post-apocalyptic. Um, Great. representation of the sea <laughs> and it's like you know and so now that art is going to be lost but with today's with everybody being able to do photography today now it lasts yeah that's... people take pictures of this stuff and the pictures last yeah, they do. i'm sure that you have you have an instagram account account i do she does and you can all read it beneath her, her yeah <laughs> they'll, they'll get all your contact information to make sure people can follow you on instagram i think i've followed you now yeah, I yeah. believe you have. Oh, goody. Yeah, okay, so now let's look at this last picture before we run out of time. I <laughs> and we, and we want to do a little dunk the junk. Yeah. That's, that's awesome to do, but um, this one is? This is inside KGB Glass in Portland. Um, they are creative, too. They make um, these awesome uh, donut pipes. Ooh. And oh, yes, you look, can there's see, donuts in, there's a donut, in the uh, sky. There's a donut sun, and then um, the, the girl that works there, she also makes beautiful marbles. So there's also a marble moon there. Um, oh, Marbles as oh. in like kids playing. No, just um, she'll make pendants out of them. Oh. Just beautiful, really intricate, large glass marbles. That's what she does with flowers like inside her to them. I down too. Then and, yeah, they're really pretty. So uh, and introduce by, us by, yeah. by donut tubing. You yeah. mean the things that you would use to squeeze out? To the God, that didn't sound right. Um, the the form to make donuts. That's cool. I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where is she in Portland? They are in this KGB glass and they are in Bayside in Portland. Mm, cool. Yeah, yeah K, just look up KGB Glass okay. to find them. So now let's talk about, do we have any more pictures? I okay, have so Dunk there's the Junk. Dunk, there we yes. go. So talk to us about Dunk the Junk. All right, so Dunk the Junk is a nonprofit founded by uh, Dr. Kevin Strong out of Camden, Maine. And uh, he's a pediatrician and he was inspired to educate school children around uh, Maine and across America, I think even in Africa now. Um, Very cool about the dangers of overconsumption of sugar. Um, he was seeing a lot of people, uh, young children coming in with diabetes and he really wants to reverse that trend. Um, so here we have the evil Soda Tron. Soda Tron. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I love it. And the kids with their own individual art, which is wonderful. So not yeah. only are we educating them, we're going to educate them using art. Yeah, and so let them get creative. That's awesome. Yeah. So what what would happen would be um, the kids would all design their own uh, drawings of the good versus bad foods, and then we would recreate them on murals. So they would have a piece of their own drawing to have in That's school. That's fantastic. Yeah. And there's a second slide too showing another grouping. So we, <laughs> there we go. Outdoors. The one on the right's in Brooklyn. So we get to travel around quite Yay. a bit with it. Yeah. So which no, is really <laughs> terrible because in Brooklyn you have Nathan's, which has a lot of good junk food. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? So <laughs> now, um, are you? So is the dunk, uh, dunk the junk? You're still the, those murals are still happening? Yeah. Okay. That's yep. awesome. Yep, they are ongoing. So yeah. we'll make sure we have that. Anybody watching this, if you think this is something your school or your uh, town wants to be a part of, Dunk the Junk is an awesome initiative. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll find out even more about it and maybe get some other pictures when, yeah. um, when Mike we have, joins when, us. But when it's Mike great. I love the combination of art with, a, with an issue. Helping, you know, to bring across the, you know, give a visual to help kids just to kind of associate with that. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that people in the arts have started more revolutions than people in politics. <laughs> Amen. It's true. I know the it. The pen is mightier than the sword. The, 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 and, so and the often, paintbrush, too, mightier yes. than. And the aerosol. Can. Can. <laughs> Christine Wright, independent artist out of Portland, Maine. You'll see how to contact her and how to follow her on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Christine, we want to thank you for coming to Dragons and Unicorns. Yes, we hope thank you, you enjoyed your time with us. Yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, you know... Find your artistic side, find your cause, and change the world. It's that simple. Go do it. Namaste.